Um, so next March? Next March, first one off the rack oh, okay. for, for Robin. Oh, yes, okay. that's if we're, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, yeah, surprise. It's a very uncertain world at the moment. Um, Julianne was going to do one for us early in the year, but because of COVID we had to cancel. Mm. So she's very kindly um, said that she'd come tonight. So I'm going to hand you over to her. I'd like you all to give her a warm welcome, please. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's really lovely to be invited and to share uh, some creative uh, energy and ideas with other creative people. My work um, is mainly done on board uh, with pencil and colour pencil, watercolour, and I've started to use oil, I mean, I'm an oil painter as well, but I've also started to use uh, acrylic paint and I work not only with a pencil, but I work with a, a Dremel um, to, to create the, the texture that I see in nature. A bit about me, I was born in Rabaul, New Guinea, um, and I had my, it's a beautiful place, and um, had my youth there, and then I went to a boarding school in Sydney, Winona. My father was Tasmanian, my, I came from Tasmania, and my mother was um, born in Dremoy, Sydney, and he proposed to her by mail, and <laughs> they went up and, in 1954, and I think it's, I tell you that because when you grow up with jungle all around you, the colours of green are unbelievable, but we also had, my father was an accountant, so he um, ran the accounts for a lot of property, um, islands and, and uh, copper plantations. So we had the chance of flying out on little boats and in huge dugout canoes, which are the length of this room. Yeah. And we swam over coral reefs with um, tortoise, turtles, mm -hmm. sharks, um, swimming down, touching the, the, the coral that opened and, and shut. And it's that um, memory that I have when I create. If I'm doing an underwater scene, I immediately go back to where I was um, my, my youth, but also my love of nature. About 10 years ago, um, the family bought a place in the Burralong Valley, which is in the Hunter Valley, Lower Hunter, near, near Laguna and Wollombi. And we, the place we have it has a huge 12-foot veranda which I sit on and I draw up to eight, nine hours a day. I work on wood panels. I am a drawer. Um, I was trained by Phyllis Shilato. Phyllis Shilato worked um, with the, she founded the Shilato Academy, which doesn't um, exist anymore. But Peter Travis, some of you will know, who started the Kite Festival. He was her uh, co-teacher. So the colour theory that I was taught at the Shiloto Design School is the colour theory that is taught in National Art School. And so Phyllis Shiloto had to write that and then she taught it. The first year we weren't allowed to, it was a three year degree, we weren't allowed to use any colour at all. It was black, white and seven greys. Or black, white and three sheets of grey paper until we actually learned how to design and use um, and, and understand tone. And I think that's very, very important when you're an artist to understand tone and how to mix colours. And so when you're walking through the bush as I do, or when I look through the Australian bush, I can sense the, the, the colours around me and I know how to mix them. And there's, there's no really vivid green here in Australia. We have to dilute it with orange to get our little our olive. I work on wood, and uh, the reason I chose to work on wood is as a drawer and painter, framing is very expensive. You mount and then glass. And I tried to find a medium that all I had to do was put a frame around or not. So it was an experiment that worked two years ago, and so this sort of kicked off. I use, I was taught this. Uh, technique by a very old artist. 
he only did uh, one-on-one -on -one lessons, but he did it on paper, and he works with a, a 9B and a 9H. I work with a 9H and every pencil you can think of. So, it's not... It's not a technique that you're going to enjoy doing if you get sore hands. So my thumb is very big because, as you can see with this one, this is this is not finished. This is part part of a big um, four piece, five piece, or six piece panel. Um, the tree is etched with a nine H. I don't draw anything at all. I just go straight in with a 9H. And a 9H scratches the surface of the wood and leaves a mark. But you can't see that until you put the tone, the different tones on top. If you are going to paint over it, you'll lose the texture because all the paint will just sink into the ridges. So to get that, I scratch with a 9H, and I've got to get my glasses to find my 9H. Or an 8H or a 10H, but I do, I love my, my favorite pencil is um, a 3H and a 9H. If I want to draw, I draw with a 3H, and if I want to etch, I draw, I etch with a 9H. I don't plan my paintings at all, um, so I, I've just delivered one to the wind. It's 27 panels, so it's as long as this table and six feet high in three different pieces. It won't fit in, so you may not see, but it was a joy to do. Um, and if, if I do a, a big piece like uh, that, or if anyone saw my pieces uh, for um, Mossman art show last year, the year before, or Hunters Hill, or the CAF, they were all um, 136 by 186, so nine panels or 12 panels. Um, I start off with a colour, just a colour. If it's pink, It'll be a pink flower or a pink cockatoo. If it's red, it might be a gymea. And then I just let it go. I just grow from panel to panel and I let the story unfold. If I plan it, um, I feel very constricted. So I don't do that. I, I do get commissions and they request a kookaburra, a cocky, a, a goanna or something. And I have to write that list and put it over there and then create because this is I find it really <laughs> I lose my freedom when I do it I love doing it but I lose my freedom so I work from nature so I go around stealing bits and pieces from the bush I ask forgiveness you know for the trees and I when I draw I tickle the page, tickle the wood, so there's no um, pressure, except when I do the 9H. So, if I just start drawing, is that okay? Yeah. I, I actually don't mind if people want to step up and watch me do it. That doesn't worry me at all. I'm quite used to it. I'm a primary school teacher at um, John Collett School in Belrose. And then I teach from my studio um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm at school Thursday, Friday. Um, and then I teach after school. And I teach all day Saturday. And then I teach... Um, adults at Enfield on Wednesdays and adults Thursday in the evening and from Tuesday at 2. So it's pretty full schedule. <laughs> but 
teaching. Pardon? When do you have time for your own work? Uh, Sunday. I get Sunday, Monday off. So I do my work Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday night, or Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty focused. I'm, I'm a trained ballet dancer and teacher. So I think that discipline has, um, has it, it, uh, it's just part of my body. Now this is me at Ching Yin. Um, I'm pushing in and if you if you don't push in and, and, and actually indent the wood or if you do it on paper the same thing then you won't get the result. Um, no, it's really interesting. It's the nine Bs, it's the Bs that will wear out. Mm. But my Hs, um, my students will use my pencils. I, I'm quite different. All my students use my equipment, every single one. I teach nine, 86 students a week and they're allowed to use it and they've learned how to respect the tool. Um, not to drop a pencil, not to throw a rubber. Um, so, and I teach them in oils and acrylic and watercolour. And they last, I mean I've got one 9B, it's probably here, it's probably 10 years old. So, now if I don't want to etch everything, and I use my Dremel, um, which is a little bit noisy. Um, the, I don't only do flora like this, all my birds, all the feathers, um, all the koalas, all, all animals are done with the etching to look at their feather and, and the textures. I think I, I um, was one of eight international artists last year who went to uh, Paris and then and then Palos in the south of France on a drawing residency. Um, Remember you telling me about that when um, I was booking you yeah. to do that? It was really exciting. It was just an amazing thing. Um, and I mentioned that because in, I've never witnessed spring in Europe, mm -hmm. and we've witnessed here. So I got to Caius, and the, it was a medieval town, and the, 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 the hill was covered in black forest. Not, not one leaf at all on the hill. And within three weeks, it was completely covered in green. The bees were out, and all the floor was buzzing, and but it was really, really delicate. And the noise of the birds were high pitched and and there was nothing textural. There was nothing organic. There was nothing, there was no screeching of birds. There was no loud noise. There was nothing like that. And I learnt, I realised then how much I missed Australia and how, I, how much I missed what I, what we took for granted which is all of this. This is a gynea, part of a gynea um, lily. And they just don't have that edge over there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I of Australia. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and the colours are different. I loved it, but it really brought home, brought home to me how different, how different we are. Um, and when I came back, my drawing um, was really prolific and I really wanted to capture the, not only the textures of the bush, but the different hues. So I won't finish all of this banks here. 
I'll get the 9B out and you'll see. If you're working on paper, you have to rub this back with a, a rubber. Just tack it back if you don't want the pencil to come through. But I'll just get uh, my 9B. Now, it's funny, the 9Bs, there's a 9B and there's a 9B. I got, you can go up to 12B now. But a 9B and an 8B, if you get the 8B in the charcoal, it's much deeper. You know if you work in lead pencils, sometimes you get that sheen, mm -hmm. different sheens, mm -hmm. and even though you picked up an 8B and you play with it in another make, it goes shiny and then you, you, you can't cover it. So I really do search my pencils. So you can yeah, see. That's graphite, it's like a stone. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, so, yeah. So this is an 8B. <laughs> you can see how much I use it. <laughs> and that's an 8B, and uh, that's an 8B. And I'm not quite sure if they're going to. Well, this is a 9B, and I think that's going to be shiny compared to this one. Yes. So this is what I do. If you want to come up and you'll see the result. So that's a charcoal? Whatever that is, a Lumigo? Black? Mm. So that scratch, that white part, is that from the other one? Is yes, it? that's from the 9B. Oh. 9H. Yeah. 9H, whatever that was. Mm. That's a nice harder. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's a nice hard pencil. H for hard. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and you can see that. Um, you can see it. You have to, to do this. Um, I very rarely do this. Actually, I've never done this. You only learn this from, from me in my studio. <laughs> so um, it's patience mm. to do it. And you have to just be um, very, you've got to really, I mean, I'm doing this blind because I've done it so many times, but it's really looking at your subject and getting to know your subject and how you're going to do it. And then the pressure of the pencil, giving you that beautiful tonal. Mm. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I love colour. So, I will go from this into my no no but i will get i'm going to have to get my color oh sorry about Is that, that right? yeah sure <laughs> come on zoomers <laughs> sorry you all right i'm not exactly sure how it was going to work so <laughs> all good one of my friends from Castle Hill that I told about to be on. <laughs> so I put them in bags of greens and browns so I don't have to go through all my things. And then oh, I love your I know, isn't that, that lovely? That? There's three of them. <laughs> Look at this one. Oh, all nice. colour coded. So pink, orange, mm. and yellow. Also, the colour of the pencil case is the pencil. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. It's a good idea because you get oh, really, yeah. it drives you mad having a set Searching. of pencils in front of That's yeah, right. Yeah. So I just, I. I try and teach my students that if you're working with lots of things, you've got to be ordered and you've got to be able to put them back so you know where to get them, you know, not have scissors and paper and stuff all around. I don't know how you work, but I can't work with mess. So. No, I, <laughs> I have to have a tidy. Oh, yeah. I'm a terrible mess. <laughs> <laughs> So I mix my colours as I do. Are they just 
just plain pencils? Uh, they're, they're, sometimes they're watercolour, sometimes they're... What is this one? Um, Arbitura, Faber-Castell. And then I go and then I, I don't actually choose the brand. I stand in front and I look for the colours that Australia's going to give me. Mm. Um, so... And it's, this colour is beautiful. This is one of my favourite colours. Being the pink. So it's a very slow process. Good thinking. Um, so my big paintings, my big nine panel or twelve panel paintings, are about 100 to 150 hours. Of drawing. Mm. Mm. So. Do you ever use hard pastel pencils? I think I have some here and what what I found was the white pastel pencil is really good when you're doing a cockatoo mm. or something. Mm. So, um, <laughs> yeah I just yeah <laughs> so I use the pen the color pencil Playing with different hues, discords in colour. And then I go back and I will go over it with a pencil to enhance it. So I'll take a 5B and a 3B if I can find them. And then I'll go back in to... It's all about playing. If you go in different directions, depending on the lay, you know, the the, mm. the board, you get different tones coming out of your lead pencil. Mm. So the grain of the board. Yeah, changes. Mm. Mm. And same as your, some watercolour, if the rougher the watercolour paper or whatever, this doesn't work. It's just smooth. Mm. I sometimes forget them. Mm. <laughs> and then I think, oh, it's not working, it's not working. Do you ever pre-treat the timber surface like in woodwork, you wet the grain and sand it back no. to raise the grain? No, I, I've never done that. I've just gone straight on mm -hmm. and then I... Spray it with a um, uh, a workable fixative mm -hmm. as I work, and then I'll do the final coat before it goes to the framers. And then when he's framed it, I do another coat. No, he does a coat, and then I it stands up, and I correct it all in case the boards don't meet. So I redraw all the connections mm -hmm. if they're not meeting, and then. Um, then we spray again. And what's your final fixative? It's just a, a flat varnish or not, not a not a shiny one. Though that one will be on the on the acrylic. It will be a, a, a shiny one, but um, not on the wood panelling, because in it, when it's mm. when you view it from far away or people photograph it, they think it's um, silk. Yeah, well, I, I, because of the that's grain. That's exactly yeah. what I thought. Yeah, I so, like that. Actually. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So yeah. they just said um, they often think it's more oriental in the way mm. it is, and it's only because of the grain of the water because yeah. they don't change it. Um, this one, I won't change, but I got a commission. So that I started that as a commission, but she wanted um, she wanted to walk through the bush and to walk down into the billabong. So I redid. I redid it, um, and there's very, very little um, wood surface left on the on the commission. Mm. But on this one, there will be all the hills. Yeah. When I do, when I use watercolor, so where did I put that thread? 
paintbrush now. So I'm going to use watercolour. I normally have a very big brush. Some people hate the um, the bleed into the into the wood. I use the bleed to my advantage. But if you don't want it, then use less water. Um, I did a, a big um, artwork based on um, the, the flowers of the wars. And so it went from, uh, from uh, what's the war before World War I? The Boer War? Yeah. So the Boer War and, and I, I researched all the flowers right up until um, the Afghani mm -hmm. War. Poppies. Yeah, but right up to, yeah, and so I did this big piece, and, and as I painted the poppies, the poppies bled oh. into, oh. which was exactly what I wanted, mm. um, but a lot of people said, oh, oh, that's awful, and I said, but you don't understand, mm. that's the, um, that's the part of it. that is the part, so I just take it, so there's no drawing, Just letting You've got to have the confidence to do that. <laughs> I think you just, I think you've got to learn that yeah. it's only an artwork. Yeah. Except if you're a watercolorist. <laughs> I think that's when you, um, I heard a, one of the artists, she got into the Gallipoli Art Prize this year and she painted the most beautiful artwork. And she was three quarters of the way through and she used her paintbrush. Oh. She started again. And that was her, I can't remember her name, but she was in this year's Gallipoli Art Prize. Um, as as m was my piece that I started in when I was in France. And it was the poppies. Um, and the, uh, so it's a nine panel on small, on, on nine of these, mm -hmm. and it's based on um, the, the grenade, the poppies and the grenade. So if you dissect a poppy and you dissect a grenade and you look at what's inside, it's very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's true. <laughs> when you Google, when you have a look at my artwork, you'll see hidden in the in the ground are the grenades of World War One and World War II. Um, and I started that in, in France, which is, I'll talk about those books in a minute. Um, uh, and the one of the ladies on the um, workshop, she was a, an American director of a, one of the major art galleries over there. And she gave us an appraisal each, the eight of us, each, uh, an hour each on our work. And she said, you have to go, you, you've got your um, bread and butter, which would be this, or teaching, or whatever. But if you have a, an interest, and it's, mine is war, you have to keep developing it but it's always on the side it's not going to get anywhere now the reason it's war is that being born in New Guinea um, all the caves were built by the Japan uh, by the natives mm. uh, that labor by the Japanese so um, and we used to walk through these caves and my brother would come back with um, live ammunition and grenades and whatever. So to us, 
it was very, very close, you mm -hmm. know. And being a child, we didn't understand it, so there was no fear. So I draw it out of compassion. I look at it and I try and put compassion into my work when I create. So when I've done the gum nut, if I want to do that, then I will take my 9H, which I can never find when I want it. So I often use both of them, one to get, um, especially when it's off on black, mm -hmm. um, while this is finer, especially, I didn't bring any birds, you can see the nest and that, but I didn't bring, is there a bird? Oh, there's that bird there, yeah, yeah but there's, there's normally my cockies are this big, mm. so, and my kookaburras, um, yeah. It's a lovely, but it's lovely if you want to draw, same as the 3H, it's lovely if you want to draw something that's so faint and so light, and that's what I say with tickling the page. So I get my students, I grab their hand, and I do that to them, because that's as light as you're going to do. Then I'll do that. And I said, that's what you've done to your page. Mm -hmm. You know, you've, you've actually ruined your page. You just get a red mark, we just get a red mark. But you can't erase it. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do that, mm -hmm. you can work with it. The same as shadowing, you know, shading. Go lightly with it. Uh, be friendly to your equipment. I think that's the most important thing. So this would, I would just play and develop and then research a bird or um, something that would go into my work. And the, my, my works have to tell a story. You know, you've got to have a conversation in the bush. When you're walking through the bush, you hear the, the rustle of the wind and the leaves and you hear the birds and you hear whatever's happening and they're talking. And if you, there's no point doing a bird here and a bird here and something over here and something over here. And they're not conversing, they're not talking. And you, it, to me, it's very, very important that um, you get wrapped into it, you step into it and, and you listen, um, close your eyes, imagine the scent. Um, so that's, that's how I do it. I mean, it's not terribly exciting, so it goes on and on. But um, when I do travel, I do, I continually draw. Um, so this is a, this book here, I went to um, Greece and Crete with my mum. My mum's father served in World War I. He was 16, and then he, so he's put his age up, and then he decided to fight in World War II and put his age down. <laughs> My mother was six when he left, and 12 when she when he returned, and but she didn't understand the concept of six years away in Greece and Crete. In 1941, Crete um, and Greece were attacked by the SS, landed but from the. Um, Air Force, and they were one day ahead of the Germans getting out, and they were rescued, taken off route. So we went, and Mum, Mum had a photo of Grandpa um, in all the the buildings and the ruins, and so we recreated. He recreated those pictures, um, and I just drew. So. This is so very, very important to me because mum took pictures and she would say, but where were we 
on such and such a, a place or uh, what such a day, and I could look this up. And like I said, we had lunch here. It was sunny. It was not, mm. and it smelt like this. Mm. Um, so I would draw continuously. And the teddy bear, the reason why there's a teddy bear, the um, military guy, the guy who took it, always carried a teddy bear as a good luck sign. Mm. So I painted the, the teddy bear for him. Um, but it's, it's really important to capture moments. I don't know who, who does diaries or, I mean, I don't write a day-to-day -day diary, but I always draw when we travel. So that's that one. I don't mind it being red. The one in Paris last year is this one. So this and this one. So I had two different things. So this was um, Kalos, me walking. So three weeks every day I walked and Could drew. Could you put that towards there for a moment? Yeah. <laughs> so every day I walked and drew. Um, yeah. And the wildflowers were on. And I, I, I spoke to the locals. They un invited me into their gardens. And I couldn't speak French, you know. They just said, come in, come in. I'd just sit and, and draw. Please. But mm. in Paris, we had the, um, an amazing tour of artists around Montparnasse. And, mm -hmm. so, and we went to um, outside their studios, but we also were invited into the Beehive. But we were taken into the most amazing exhibition. Um, and the director gave us a private tour. And he's a collector himself, and we said, how do you get these pieces? And his, his interest was, the piece, the pieces before Impressionism became famous. So he sources these artworks that were the works just before Impressionism. Mm -hmm. And it's four um, tiers of uh, uh, stairs, and it's gallery hung. And he, so we had access to these mm -hmm. most amazing paintings. But he was really interesting because he said, uh, before Impressionism, these artworks, especially about the time on plein air, he, um, he said they were chasing the moment and catching it with a brush. That's what it was about. Mm -hmm. not, not just um, getting out there and painting. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. He just... Uh, and so they went out with three or four canvases, as you know, and they painted and they changed. But I thought that was the, the loveliest quote mm. to, to hear. And then he went on to say, um, uh, drawing is thinking in action, artists and science, maths, installation. So it's just really, it's those little things that I collect and write, and I was the only artist who wrote. The other seven just walked and took photographs. Mm. Um, so I'm just standing there, trying <laughs> and writing as I go. I've been in that situation <laughs> too. I, I did a journal that I illustrated in India. I was checking in oh, India. amazing. But coming back to Delhi Airport, ready to get home, and I was catching a rabbit-looking dog that called a uh, rapist the second. Yeah. Guys came over. They saw this European making mm. notes in their mm. 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 hand. They didn't understand. No, I was an artist. And this this mm. one here um, is also another book that uh, Paul and I, my husband and I, in 2016, we decided to go overseas for three months. But we went to Eastern Europe, so we went to Bosnia and um, Hungary and mm. places like that. And in Bosnia, the, um, there's no tourists where we went. Um, uh, we went to West, not Wesker, um, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, got it. Anyway, we were the only tourists, uh, um, Moktogola or whatever it is, and the Haystacks are exactly the same as the haystacks in Monet's paintings. Mm. So you've got the big mounds and the central fork and they're mm. going on. But what was really weird is that you've got this 
lovely, lovely um, field and you're driving through and there's these haystacks, but they're put in such a way that they look as though they're, they're having a real conversation, like mm. Harry Potter's, you know, the flying <laughs> evil there. <Yeah. laughs> and so I, I've got this vivid imagination of these, these um, haystacks and, and, you, and the, they still were working the fields at nine o'clock at night they st with a hoe. Mm. There was no electric mm. equipment. So it really brings back to you as a person, as an artist, when you draw, you see the finite detail. You really understand. It's not just a photograph and, oh, you know, we ate there and there's a plate of food. If you draw it and you, or you walk it and you, and you stop and you smell, you really become part of the landscape. And I think that's really important as an artist to, mm. to mm. dissolve Connect. yourself. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, you go there sort of, you know, it's all a big picture in front yes. of you. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, then we went back to Paris and uh, we walked around. We stayed in a beautiful castle. Um, what was, like he called it a castle in, uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, and the only reason why there was no railroad where we were, no, no one there is that the, the Czechoslovakian government decided that there would never be a railroad, so you could only get to this place by car, and so that was the avenue of trees Aww. just Aww. down the side. It was 400 years old, mm. the big car was still there, mm. and the light was unbelievable. The light, mm. I've never seen light like this, mm. and they actually use it for film sets. Mm. Um, so, and there's an old car. So it was just amazing. I mean, I'm going off the track. I'm thinking of what I do and <laughs> how I how I get to this. Um, it's and then we went to Broken Hill. Um, so as we went to Broken Hill, I just drew and I collected uh, the nature and I drew around it. Um, so again, it's all you can pick them up. Doesn't worry me. Mm. It's all 30 second, one minute drawings. There's nothing, I don't, I don't, I'm not an architect. Um, I just try and capture the essence of the moment. And I try to say to people, oh, you know, when, when we're drawing, I, I haven't got time. I've got to get the lay of the land or the, the building and that. I said, all you have to do is, if it's a church, just draw the scaffolding, draw the shape of it, and then only draw one section go and draw one window or go and draw one architrave mm -hmm. and, and the detail you see in that, you'll be there for 10 minutes anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. it's not about drawing a building, it's about drawing mm -hmm. the little details. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Kalos, when I was walking around for those three weeks, there was never, um, never a time that I didn't see something I didn't know, hadn't seen before. There was little gargoyles hidden in on the buildings and various yeah, things, yeah. Um, and the churches. Um, so, you know, it was it was a beautiful gift to mm. have time to draw. Yeah, it was a good idea because I, I like the concertina book things. Yeah, I love yeah. concertina. But yeah. uh, these are just like uh, make your own little concertina. Absolutely, yeah. I make I make them. She idea. made one for us when we did this garden, art in the garden. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've so, got one on display. So I make, I make them because you're doing the art and then it's theirs to take home. So you can draw your own, but then you have this whole little thing that um, that you own and it captures something of the day. You pick it up, that's fine. So this is in Wollombi. So this is on both sides, you can see. And I drew on the leaf. So if you get a leaf and you um, cover it with Mod Podge, both sides, you know, it's obviously a fresh leaf, mm. uh, and then draw on it. So that's four years old, I think. So what, it's still what's Mod Podge? It's just a, a oh, like it's a most bloom. versatile, it's awesome just, stuff yes. ever. Ever, you can do lots of things. It's with so Mod great. Podge. It's sort of like a slightly thinner than texture paper. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Podge. such glue so or or finishing. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's like a glaze, yeah. but it's yeah. lovely on a. So I've got my P -O -D. year threes. Oh, painting the leaves yeah. both sides, then you've got to let it dry. Mm. Gloss and now they're painting on it, mm. but it's a week old, and I, you can just still fold it, it doesn't crack. So it stays, it stays malleable. So they're painting both sides. 
It's j just trying to get people to work not just on paper, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that's an actual fresh leaf. That's a fresh leaf. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gone mm -hmm. brown. What have you drawn on it? It's drawn on a house. It looks like an old hotel or... Yeah. What, no, what have you drawn on it with? A oh, pencil pen, a fine liner, okay. and then I've probably watercolored or okay. used something. Yeah, and it's on this side as well. Mm -hmm. So I do. Uh, this one's cracked because it's on the fold. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, my fudge comes in shiny. Yes, all matte. All matte, yeah. So um, I just try and do different, different things. And this work here is a, this is a miniature. I've actually done quite a really big one. As a drawer, um, you can't enter major competitions. Um, there's not a lot without paint. So you, I had to come up with a way of drawing and using paint at the same time. So I'm eligible to enter these um, bigger competitions. So this mm. is the way I've, I've uh, addressed it. I've, I've yet to enter a piece, so because this is only two weeks old that I've been doing this type mm. of thing. Uh, but it's still recognisable as me because it's yeah, my yeah, style yeah. and it's my technique yeah. and I draw the Banksia often but it's it's got uh, birds and stuff so the one that's um, at home that I did it's on my phone you probably won't I can get it up but I don't know whether you'll um, see it that's okay just bring some glasses so. and I apologise for my phone going off if I turn it Oh, my, I don't want to lose maps so, <laughs> because I got out here and it's not working on my car. Um, so I've got to get home. I've got to get home. Um, but I may have the, oh, I don't have it. I don't have it, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, did you post it online at all? It's online. It's online. Okay. Yeah, it's online. Um, mm -hmm. Now, how do I get to maps? Well, I'll have to someone else help me later. Yeah. <laughs> no. I can help you. Okay. <laughs> um, are there any questions? Um, I mean, I could oh, keep really working really here, but it's, you know. Where do you buy your boards? Um, are they especially made you? Or do you make them? No, no, no. So, I go to Art Scene. Um, Artsy yeah. have them, Eckersleys have them, have oh, different yeah. ones yeah, in, okay. in bundles of five yeah. or, or I just went over there the other we day. We can a bit smaller the ones we have in stock right now, but yeah. we can get we can big ones. Get yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and also <laughs> Place of Hornsby <laughs> yeah. um, have really the big boards oh, now. Cool, so yeah. uh, I just buy one of if I don't know what it is, because I know that art scene, the, the front of the board is Birchwood. And oh, so yeah. I can draw very yeah. easily into yeah. it. Well, they're one of our suppliers. So oh, okay. So yeah. one of sometimes they're a bit shiny, and so you, it's a different feel when mm -hmm. you're working. So it's not different. all boards are the same. Mm -hmm. And you've also got to be careful the way you're working or laying it out is the grain. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, there's a bit of a, a mark there. You know, you've got to sort of make sure it. Uh, yeah, so I, my, 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 I forget that when I'm creating, yeah, so right. sometimes this way, sometimes yeah. this way, yeah, and I just yeah, go, look, that's the way it is, I'm an artist. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see, you've got to sort of make it sort of work yeah. with what you're doing. Yeah. Well, they're usually used for oh, encaustic yeah. and that sort of thing, aren't mm. they? Yeah. There's no, I don't know of any other artist who does mm -hmm. what I do. No, that's why we wanted um, to get you. <laughs> so, um, it was quite unique, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So Very we'll good. just see, I mean, I, yeah, it's fun. I lose myself mm. totally. I can imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> it's very therapeutic. It's very therapeutic. You know, very with watercolour on there, it's so nice and smooth. Yeah. It just, just yeah. goes on. And the painting with acrylic is lovely too mm. on it. It's just. It's when you're doing some print making, you can use the, the wood grain. Yeah, yeah to make it. <laughs> and you can see <laughs> through yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Like cellophane, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 You can sort of rub it in certain ways to yeah. emphasize the actual yeah. grain. Yeah. That would be beautiful. But she has a different medium. Mm. So, yeah. I have to say, that you and I have got so much in common. John, John actually worked in Rabaul. Oh, did you? Yeah. Whereabouts were you in Rabaul? Yeah. Where, 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 where
Whereabouts in Rabaul were you? Julianne was born in uh, Rabaul. Oh, Rabaul. I, I worked in uh, Carlsbad. Okay. Carlsbad. Yes. Where all the, where they grow the coffee and all yes. that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah, we installed that little powerhouse. Okay. There was three diesel engines in yeah. there. Yeah, yep. And I did all the pipe work. There were three of us, and there was a fifth. Yeah. Which is diesel engines. So, in. what year were you there? Oh, that was in 1963. Oh yeah, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my parents went up. Actually. My parents went up in fifty. Dad went in fifty three. Married in fifty four, and then we had to leave in seventy one because my father was very ill. So, um, but yeah, so he was an accountant for a lot of the copper plantations and that. Yeah, my father was an accountant too. And then and my granddaughter's a dancer. We do have a lot in common. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever have to re-etch the lines if you find that the colour goes down in them? No, what happens if I do all this etching and I leave it for two days, mm -hmm. I have to it it doesn't stay fresh. It's like it closes. So I don't I don't etch the whole lot and then come back. Mm -hmm. I etch colour, etch colour. Right. And your colour is just sort of carefully over the top it's not down in no the... no it's not pushed into mm. it no because i'll lose my etching as yeah as i push into it mm. but my dark areas i do actually push into it with the 9b right. um, and um, yeah but i i just i if i make a mistake what people think it's a mistake i just make it work i mean it's mm. it's mm. it's nature um and i'll i color all this with um, so if I was going to do blossom, I would get push that there. Um, it, it's, it's just the fixative, but the final fixative. Right, yeah. so what you'd use for classical work? Yes, exactly that. Right. Exactly yeah. that, yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't be like what you would do over an acrylic uh, Whatever it says on the jar, on the, on the can, acrylic, whatever, whatever the thing is. I went, in, I went into um, arts and I said, this is what I want. Right. I need to... Um, because if I put my hand over that, it's going to smudge. So I always work with, you know, a piece of paper or something as I work. Um, and then I spray it and then I leave it to work on it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not a heavy spray. It's quite a light spray. Yeah. So you, you don't touch it, so you'll spray before you leave it. Yeah, so I, I'd take this home and I'd spray just this yeah. section, just especially this dark bit. Mm -hmm. This doesn't worry me. But as soon as I put my hand on it, it's going to go everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's actually nine B that's the, the dark. Yes. Not, it's not charcoal. No. no. Oh, it's a nine B or an, it's it's this one. Mm -hmm. The Lumograph Stabler. I only work with Stabler if I can. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of pencils. I work with other ones, but my mm -hmm. major mm -hmm. one is Stabler. Mm -hmm. pencils are really yeah. like. And they last, they last and last. As I said, my students use them. Mm. They're 10, 15 years old, and they're still going. 
No, you go, go and look and test and look and test. <laughs> <laughs> Get what you need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then blue and blue on the outside. Yeah. 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 Deirdre owns the, uh, the art shop. Oh, okay. So she's yeah. 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 yeah, so that's... I. Um, and the Kuboni, in Paris I bought the 12B, the 12B and a 12H or 10H. And now mm. they have them here. Mm. Yeah, I've seen the 12 and things. I just haven't seen these ones with the black on the outside. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's how you use them, I think. It's just, mm. it's getting it's to know your tool. tool. Yeah. Yeah. Really getting to know your yeah. tool and not being afraid to experiment. Do you know, it's very, very important to... So all this charcoal here is done with pencil. All that is pencil. Mm. The only thing that's paint on that is the bird. Oh, and, and this? Oh, that's watercolour. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's all watercolour. Yeah. And the bird's painted on this. And there's gold. Yeah. So I, this is lovely. I don't know. Do you have this in your car? Oh, you've thing? got gold. These are, This is the best set of... I've seen that. All metallics. Yeah, yeah. all metallics. So the gold is on that. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely beautiful to work with. Watercolour. Oh, Japanese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I use this, and now it comes... In Puritan. now they come in beautiful soft pastel colours. Yeah, so. I've seen them on Facebook. Yeah, we just got, got that metallic one from uh, yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 I could play with that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Someone just read it. I think it was the left. <laughs> so um, I'm supposed to be in, I was supposed to be in Italy this year. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching, <laughs> teaching for, um, teaching a two-week art workshop. It's run by um, Italy Art Class. And so they cancelled that, of course, and then, then it was put till next year. So I'm supposed to be teaching there next year in... Um, not, not Tuscanini, Tuscanini, I've got to think about it. No, it's near there. But I don't think we'll be flying to Italy next year. So it will be the year after. Um, but they're probably going to run some art workshops within New South Wales, if we can, down the track. So, um, and then uh, I should also be in a residency in uh, La Confiente, which is in... Burgundy, so I was offered that, and that is not going ahead so until next year or the year after. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, everything's up in the air. Everything is up in the air. Thank you so much for your demonstration. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I just need to. I hope you did. So, you definitely did. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we go and clap? Yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think you've been one of the best demos I've ever been to, really. Uh, yeah, no, it's very, very something quite different. And, and, well, thank you uh, for passing on the name. Fantastic. I think it's nice to escape and mm. learn yeah. something new. It is, isn't it? And teaching is not about not sharing. I think teaching, a good teacher, you don't own the knowledge. No. You share, share it. Yes. Well, I'm very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. You are very good because I, I, you know, I felt quite embarrassed asking you all those questions <laughs> in the beginning because, you know, the first one was cancelled with the, the with the good vibes here, yeah. and then, then the next one was the, uh, the virus, and 